every disc golfer dreams of throwing that perfect shot that comes out on a hyzer, flips up the flat, and just seems to go forever. Not only is the hyzer flip one of the prettiest shots in disc golf, it's also one of the most practical. Whether it's a tunnel shot or just needed for added distance or control, a hyzer flip is an essential piece of every disc golfer's bag. For starters, it's important to have the right disc selection. You don't want to be throwing an overstable disc when you're learning how to throw a hyzer flip. Yes, you see Calvin Heimberg throw destroyers and flip them up and throw them over 500 feet, but that's because he has extreme arm speed that most of us average guys just simply don't. You need to start with an understable disc. Um, a few of my favorite discs to hyzer flip is Fuse, which is an understable mid-range, mid um, a Sidewinder made by Innova, or the Discraft Heat. Um, the Heat, for example, is, I believe, a 9-5, negative 3-1. There are four numbers in the flight number system, and what we're paying attention to is the third number. First is speed, second is glide, third is turn, and fourth is the fade. Turn is how much that disc wants to go to the right on a right-hand backhand throw. A negative 2, 3, 4 is going to be more understable. So you know your typical throw is going to go out and it's going to finish left. Well, an understable disc is going to want to go to the right first um, before it finishes back left. The more understable it is, the easier it is to get that disc to actually do that turn. A disc like the Sidewinder I actually use for rollers because if I throw it hard enough and flat, it'll turn all the way over onto the side and then roll. So what I'm going to do here is throw a handful of discs at different stability levels um, on a completely flat plane, just so you can see how they act differently. You're not throwing a hyzer flip flat. You're throwing it at hyzer. Um, so all, all you have to do is imagine those flight numbers are just on a sideways disc. So this disc, for example, has negative three turn. So it really wants to drift over to the right. Well, if you take that disc and instead of throwing it flat, you initially throw it on a hyzer like this. When it wants to turn to the right, it's actually going to be popping up to flat and then flying flat from there. I believe it's essential for every disc golfer to start off with just smooth, flat throws. Once you have that down, it's a lot easier to add other aspects of your game. If you start with a nice flat throw like this, all it takes to throw an Anheuser is to lean back and to throw a hyzer to lean forward. You see, the disc doesn't move in my power pocket. It's staying in the same slot no matter what. It's my body angle that's going to change the amount of hyzer or Anheuser that disc goes. I'm not using my wrist to pronate that disc. I'm using simply my body angle. As you can see, that disc, that disc starts out like this. Hyzer flips up to flat, pushes, and then eventually fades back down. Um, if it doesn't have enough hyzer, it's going to start like this, and it's going to turn, and it's just going to keep turning and keep turning and keep turning. That's a nice shot to have. It's an important shot to have. Um, but not necessarily what we're trying to do right here. What our goal today is to teach you guys how to throw a straight hyzer flip for those tunnel shots. So all we want is it to just pop up the flat, go straight, and then pop back down. It's going to be your straightest flight you can possibly have. No S-curve, nothing, just a straight laser beam. One of the biggest mistakes I see with people trying to throw hyzer flips is simply that their form falls apart when they try to throw a hyzer. When you're throwing a nice straight shot, your arm is going straight back like this away from the target, and then coming straight towards your target, in this case, to the camera. So just a nice straight throw. When you're throwing a hyzer, nothing changes except your body position. You're going to bend over a little bit, and notice how that disc goes from flat to now it's on that angle of that hyzer flip. But the biggest mistake I find is at the hit point, the end of the throw. So when you're coming through, it's, it's easy to drive that elbow, throw that straight disc like this. For some reason, once we bend over, we all have a tendency to just kind of fly open like this, leaving that disc nose up and letting it just fly up into the sky, fade away, and just be an overall bad shot. So really focus on driving through, even when you're bent over in this lower hyzer position, still driving through just as if you would on a straight shot. So now that we have a basic understanding of what an understable and an overstable disc does and what that means, let's talk about what happens in different wind conditions. But most of the time, we don't have the luxury of nice flat ground, 
no wind, no other issues. And a headwind, when the wind is coming into your face, that is going to make the disc even more understable. So a disc that's already understable is gonna be even further understable when thrown into a headwind. On the other side of that, a disc that is typically more stable is going to lose some of that stability when thrown into a headwind. If you're trying to throw a hyzer flip into a strong headwind, you may not need as understable of a, of a driver as you may think. Then on the other side of things, if you have a tailwind, which is wind coming from behind you, the opposite is true. An understable driver will actually be less understable when thrown with a tailwind. So when it comes to disc selection, throwing into a headwind, you're gonna wanna get something a little bit more stable. Throwing in from a tailwind, you're gonna want a little bit more understability, especially when you're trying to get that hyzer flip shot. Well, I hope this video was able to teach some of you guys to throw your first hyzer flips and some of you be able to throw better hyzer flips. If you guys have other questions about other shots, how to throw them, please drop them down in the comments. I'd be happy to make a video about it. Um, I love teaching the game. I want everybody to get out there and have fun. With that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys as always.